Hey, what's up motivators? Taryn here. Recently, a new cyclist asked me about gravel bikes and he said, now why would I have a gravel bike versus a hybrid bike? Now, depending on what type of riding you're doing, there are definitely some differences and we're gonna talk about those differences and we're going to talk about, should you be looking at getting a hybrid bike or should you be thinking about getting a gravel bike? My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following years, I found endurance sports, lost 65 pounds, won age groups, raced world championships, broke records, and trained and learned from some of the best athletes and coaches in the world. You too can use endurance sports to change your life and accomplish your fitness goals. You just need a system, a system that's meant for us amateurs who wanna be our best while feeling our strongest and healthiest. My company Motive offers that system and I wanna share some of the tips from it today. So this is the Canyon Grail gravel bike. Canyon is a sponsor of mine. They've supplied this bike, but they don't even know that I'm doing this video. They haven't specified anything about this video. You are going to get my genuine opinion about this gravel bike. A, it's awesome. Gravel to me is absolutely everything. If I only had to have one bike, it would definitely be a gravel bike, but that's not the case for absolutely everyone. There are going to be some differences between this bike a road bike and a hybrid bike that we are going to discuss that are going to help you make a decision on which bike you should get. Main difference between a hybrid bike and a gravel bike is going to be the handlebar system. A hybrid bike is going to have a flat bar that is a lot more like a mountain bike. The gravel bike is going to have more of a road bike kind of system. This Canyon Grail has the two level bars and a lot of people ask, do I like this? I like it because it takes away some of the shock absorption. Whatever gravel bike you have, it should have some sort of design up at the front to take away a lot of the chatter. What this allows you to do is ride a lot more similar to how a road bike would ride, but be off road. And what I mean by that is being in this road bike position is gonna bring you a little bit lower than you'd be on a hybrid bike. You're gonna be higher up on a hybrid bike being less aerodynamic, whereas on the gravel bike, you're gonna, going to be lower going to be more aerodynamic, so you're going to be able to go faster, more aggressive. You're going to be able to explore more. You're going to have a bigger adventure because you can go out and conquer more places. This is that really nice balance of just aggressive enough to go fast while being upright enough to be comfortable, whereas the hybrid bike is really just focused strictly on comfort. So if you do take that out for longer rides, you're not gonna go as fast, you're not going to be able to explore as much. The next thing that's different between a gravel bike and a hybrid bike is a gravel bike has tires that are specifically designed to be much more similar to a mountain bike, whereas a hybrid bike is meant to have tires that are similar to a road bike. So in a gravel bike, they're going to be very knobby to allow you to go off road. A hybrid bike is going to be much more smooth to allow you to go faster on the road. It's really all in the design of one versus the other. The gravel bike is meant to be off road, whereas the hybrid bike is meant to be on the road. Of course, you can take a hybrid bike and most of them are going to have tire clearance in the fork, and in the rear triangle to allow you to put on bigger tires, but it's not going to come with it. The gravel bike is ideally designed with the tires, with the clearance, with the disc brakes. A lot of hybrid bikes do have disc brakes as well, but the cheaper hybrid bikes are going to have caliper brakes, so the discs aren't going to be as good when you're going on very mountainous terrain and taking very sharp downhills with hard turns. This is designed for being off-road and doing it really well. The next thing that's different between the gravel bike and the hybrid bike is the entire drivetrain. Because the hybrid bike is meant to be on the road and the gravel bike is meant to go over much more hilly terrain, the gear ratio on a gravel bike is going to have a much, much wider range. You can see how the gear ratio on the grail here starts with a tiny, tiny little cog set here and goes all the way up to a very big cog set here. That huge range allows you to go downhill very fast and then on some very serious uphills. A hybrid bike is going to have a very narrow range where there isn't a big difference in the gears between the highest and the lowest gear because you're going on road more than you're going on hilly terrain. So again, you can use the hybrid bike to go on hilly terrain, but 
as soon as you start going downhill significantly or uphill significantly, you're gonna have a much harder time taking that hybrid bike out onto those hills, whereas the gravel bike is going to excel in that. And generally, one of the main differences between a gravel bike and a hybrid bike is going to be the price point. A hybrid bike is going to typically range from around $400 up to maybe $1,500. Whereas a gravel bike is going to be more like $1,000 up to six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000. The reason being that a gravel bike tends to be meant for serious riding. People who are going out and using a bike, pushing it to the limit, going really fast, going on sharp downhills, really hard uphills, working really hard. Maybe they're doing a gravel race. They're working the bike really hard and they wanna get a lot out of it. They want a nice light bike. This is all carbon fiber. This has electronic shifting. This has an excellent gear ratio. This has disc brakes. This is a bike that I can push to the limits whereas a hybrid bike is really just meant for riding around very casually. So you have to think that the casual athlete, the casual rider who's just going around town is going to be much better serviced by a hybrid bike. Whereas if you want to push a bike to the limits and really explore, you're going to pay a little bit more for a higher quality bike that is meant to be pushed to the limits being a gravel bike like this. We need to take a quick second to thank a sponsor. Athletic Greens is a product that I use literally every single day. I like Athletic Greens as a replacement for a traditional multivitamin. Athletic Greens is made with whole foods. It contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And because it is made from whole foods and you can mix it up as a greens powder in a shake or whatever you want, it's much easier for your body to actually absorb. If you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Terran, you will get a free year's supply of vitamin D with your first purchase and five free travel packages. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash Terran to get yourself some Athletic Greens. Everyone that I know that's tried it has absolutely loved it, so you will too. Give it a shot. So the people that should consider a gravel bike are the people that are going to be looking at racing, looking at performance, looking at doing a lot of exploring, getting out regularly and using the bike two, three times a week, maybe for many months, really pushing it and they don't mind paying for that. The people who are looking at a hybrid bike are the people that are going to ride more casually around town and maybe if you did want to go off road, you'd be willing to swap the tires for something a little bit more knobby to get you off road. But once you get off road, you're not looking at any sort of performance once you get there. You are okay with a heavier bike, a slower bike, a bike that is going to have a gear ratio that isn't meant for being off road, but you're just out there for the sake of being out there and that's totally okay. Hopefully that helps you in your buying decision. Personally, I think that gravel riding is every everything that endurance racing should be. It's adventurous, it's outdoors, it's in nature. It is pushing yourself to high intensities on uphills. You can recover on the downhills. You can explore huge amounts of terrain. You can go into races. Gravel riding, I think, is just in its infancy. It's exploding. And the reason that it's exploding is because it's a ton of fun. Now, if you do want to consider getting into some gravel races, we have an app for that and you can click the link in the description below where we have training plans to help you get to gravel races that are very short and punchy or huge adventures that are taking upwards of 12, 15, 16 hours. You can click the link in the description below for that. Try it for free for 14 days and if you like it, stick around and hopefully we see you at a gravel race. Gravel for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, motivators.